All right, 6.1, measures of central tendency. Three measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. Now, the steps to calculate mean and median and mode, you need to do the following. It's very important that you put the numbers in order. The reason I want you to put the numbers in order is not in, in order to find the mean, but to help us find the median and the mode. Next, median is the middle number. So if you were to find the middle number, what you would have to do is calculate, is calculate the number of numbers, add one, that's right, add one, and divide by two. Here's why. If I, for example, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of data, in order to find the middle, it's very easy to find the middle and to say that it's this piece of data. There are four on either side, so that means this middle piece of data would be our median. Especially, but remember, they has to be put in order. Now, it's okay if it's a small number, but let's say you have a hundred pieces of data and you want to find the middle. How would you do that? Well, you would take a hundred plus one and say, okay, once I know that, I divide it by two. That gives me 50.5. That means that my middle data is between 50 and 51. And because it's between 50 and 51, you would add those two numbers and divide by two. So that's how you figure out what the middle number is. And we'll be looking at more examples of this in our lesson. So going back to what the median is, it is the middle number. The mode, because we put it in order, you'll be able to see the most repeating number. So sometimes you have one mode, so one number that's repeated the most. Sometimes you have more than one mode, where you have multiple sets of numbers that repeat so that you have multiple numbers that are the mode. And finally, you may have no mode whatsoever. Now, the reason why it's important to note this is that of all the measures of central tendency, mode is the only one that could possibly not exist with given a set piece of data. Now, again, one more time, putting the numbers in order will help us find the middle number and will help us find the mode quicker. It doesn't help to find the mean. What is mean? Well, mean is the average. How do you find the average? Well, you add up all the numbers, so sum of all the numbers, add them all up, and divide by the number of numbers. Now, outliers will affect certain parts of the measures of central tendency. In fact, outliers have a greater effect on the mean than other measures and either pull the mean up or drag the mean down, depending on the outliers. A weighted mean, such as, now we use mu to represent the weighted mean, is equal to the sum of all the numbers times the weight divided by the sum of all the weights. So we'll look at an example of what this means in a minute. So x represents each data value, so x1, x2, x3 is all the numbers, sum of all the numbers, multiplied by the weight of each of those numbers, or the frequency that occurs, and you divide it by the number of uh, the total weight that you're using, or the total frequency that you're using. So we're going to look at examples of what a weighted mean is. How is that different from a mean? Mean means that all the numbers have the same, same weighting. They're worth the same value. A weighted mean means that each value has a certain um, weight, a certain importance level. And we're going to look at two sets of examples where weighted mean is important. Example one, a math department assigns the following weights for each category in its data management course. So we have knowledge, 16%, application, 16%, communication, 9%, inquiry, 9%, a blog discussion game, 20%, quizzes and 
are 10% and exam is 20%. Now, Esther's marks in the course so far are 76%, 75%, 76% in knowledge, 75% in application, 89% in communication, 55% in inquiry, and 100% in blog, and finally 77% on her quizzes. Now, she still needs to write the final exam. Part A is to determine the weighted mean for Esther before writing her final exam. Part B is, is it possible for Esther to receive a final mark of 90%? And you're to justify your answer. So we're going to answer Part A first. To answer Part A, to get the weighted mean, we have to go back for a second and look at the values. To calculate the weighted mean, means that this is knowledge. Knowledge is worth 16% of the mark. Application is worth 16% of the 75% that she got. 89% of the 9%, so 9% of the 89%. And literally, folks, that's how your marks are calculated when given a mark report. So, again, we take all the values. 76 was the was worth 16%, so we take 76 and its raw value, and we multiply that by this percentage value of the weighted value, so 0 0.16. Plus 75% was in her knowledge, uh, application, sorry, and that was worth 16%. Plus 89% of her communication, 0.09% worth, plus 55 in inquiry, and that was worth 9%, plus 100% on the blog, and the game, and the discussion, so she got 20% of that 100, plus 77% on the, uh, on the remaining 10%, and that was the quizzes, so we have all the different pieces there. And what was the total weight that we have in total? Well, 16% plus 16% plus 9% plus 9% plus 20% plus 10% is equal to 80%. So we take the weighted mean, so adding up all the sums based on their weights and divided by what's there, so 0 0.8. We find out that our weighted mean is 81.025. That means Esther's getting about 81% in the course. Now the second part, part B, says, is Esther able to get 90%? Well, to get 90%, what we need to do is calculate how much of that is the exam, how much she would need on the exam to get her mark. Well, that means we have to take the bottom, which was 0 0.8, Okay, and what we're going to do with this, sorry, say that again, 64.82 was the total sum at the top of the weighted mean that we just calculated. So the total sum here was 64.82. On the bottom, we divided by 0 0.8. Now, what we're going to do now is add the exam. So some exam mark, let's call it E for the exam, which was worth 20% of the mark. And on the bottom, we add 0 0.2. Now, a lot of you are going, why don't we just put 1 on the bottom? Well, folks, we need to understand why it's 1 on the bottom. It's 1 because 80% we've already calculated, which was up here, and then plus the 20% for the exam. So this total on the bottom is 1. So we have 90 is equal to 64.82 plus E times 0 0.2. We move things over, and we solve for E. E will turn out to be 25.18 divided by 0 0.2, which means Esther needs to get on the exam 126% on the exam. Well, logically, folks, that's not possible. So therefore, Esther cannot receive 90% in the course because it is impossible to get greater than 100% on the exam. All right, let's try another example. Example two, a group of children were asked how many hours a day they spend playing video games. The table shows the data. So here we have some data, number of hours playing video games. Great. 
So, part A, determine the estimated mean, median number of hours and modal interval for the distribution. Discuss any skewing of the data with respect to the measures of central tendency. All right, let's look here. We need to calculate the mean, median, and modal interval. So modal means that this interval right here has the most repeating number of children. Most children spend two to four hours on playing video games. So that we can find out right away. Mean, median, and mode are a little bit harder to calculate because we have an interval here. So there is a way to calculate the values here, and that is. So, so we're going to look at these values again, and we're going to stretch out our table. So here we have 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, 8 to 10. And what we're going to do is create a column in the middle. Why are we doing that? Well, we're going to find the midpoint, okay? The midpoint of all of these numbers. Because the interval cannot help us find the mean and the median, we need to be able to figure out what the midpoint value is in order to find a, an, a mean that works here. So how do we do that? Well, from 0 to 2, what's the middle between 0 to 2? That's right, folks. It's 1. Between 2 and 4 is 3, between 4 and 6 is 5, between 6 and 8 is 7, and between 8 and 10 is 9. So we just take the midpoint value of the interval here, and now we have a certain number of children in each of those midpoint values. So what we do is now take the midpoint that we calculated and multiply by the number of children. So we have 1 hour average between 0 to 2, 1 hour middle, and 3 children play 1 hour of video games. So we do 1 times 3. Next one. We have 3 hours of video games that 11 children play, which is 33. 5 hours, 7 children, which is 35. 7 hours, 2 children, which is 14 and nine hours, one child, and that's nine. Now, what we can do is calculate the mean, the average. How do we calculate the average? Well, we need some more information. First of all, we need to know how many in total there were in terms of children, and we need to now find out in total how many hours that they spend, so the total number of hours. So cumulative frequency, folks, is adding up all the possible values. We have three, cumulative frequency of the children, not the number of multiply, not this number, folks. The cumulative frequency is the number of children. We have three here, children, a total of 14 children here, a total of 21 children on the next line, a total of 23 children on the next line, and a total of 24 children on the last line. So what this cumulative frequency will do is help us. It helps us understand that there were 24 children in total. So how do we calculate the median, folks, the median? To calculate the median, what we need to do is the following. Is we know there are 24 children total plus 1 to find the middle number divided by 2, and that's 12.5. 12.5 means that between the 12th and the 13th child, 12 to the 13th is our middle. 12th and 13th value is our middle. In order, the 12th and 13th. Well, let's look where the 12th and 13th occur. It's very hard to read that here. We use the cumulative frequency to determine where the median occurred. That is, the 12th to 13th falls in this level. We're, we haven't hit 14 yet, so 12th to 13th means that 2 to 4 hours is the median number of hours a child will spend watching TV. 2 to 4 hours. Now, what we need to now look at is, does our mean match our data? Or is it possibly skewed? How do we do that? Well, we need to calculate the sum. 
the sum of the frequency. That is, the sum of all the numbers of children. And the sum of the frequency is 24. That is known as the cumulative frequency. We have 24 children in total being calculated or measured. Next, we have to add the sum of this value. Why? Because we had three children watching one hour of TV, so that totals of three hours. Eleven children, sorry, doing three hours of video games gives you 33 hours. So we need to find the total number of hours, and we find out that the total number of hours, so the total midpoint times the frequency, is equal to 94. So the total sum here. We need the total sum here in this column, and we need the total sum in this column. And we find out, once you calculate that, that the average, now this is a sample, remember, not of all the possible children in the whole wide world. This is a sample of children that was taken. We take 94. So again, the sum of the sum of the um, midpoint times the frequency divided by the sum of the frequency. So again, the total number of hours, which was 94 hours, divided by the number of children that was measured, which is 24, we use that information to find out that the average was 3.9167. So this is the average number of hours spent for these children playing video games. Based on the mean median that we found earlier, now if you remember correctly, our median that we found earlier, let's just go over that, the median that we found was, that's right, it had to have been 24 plus 1 divided by 2, which means it's between the 12th and the 13th piece of data. And because it's between the 12th and 13th piece of data, we look inside our cumulative frequency, and the 12th and 13th piece of data falls in this category. So it says that the median is 2 to 4 hours. We had a mean in that range, and we now have a median in that range. Now notice that in 2 to 4 hours, our midpoint was exactly 3. But here we have 3.967. What that means is the numbers are closer to 4, which means we probably have heavier data towards the end of 3, or heavier on the other side than we do on the, uh, on the previous side. And if you look here, we have more pieces of data after 3 hours than we do before 3 hours. So it makes sense that our mean is slightly skewed on the more hours than it is on the less. So here's an example of where the mean can be affected by values that are given. For example, the one child who watches, who does nine hours of video games. That's a lot of video games. All right, folks. Well, that's the end of the information regarding measures of central tendency. Have a numerical day.